Greetings ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Qatar track guide and setup and this is also going to include the ERS deployment guide around Qatar. There's going to be a few variations from person to person. Uh, this will be the best way I found for myself. You can try it out, uh, maybe take some ideas and use it accordingly for your own hot lap. See where you gain time, where you lose time. But anyway, uh, as you can see in the background, we are just warming up our tires in Grand Prix mode over here. This is short qualifying and this is the third run towards the end. Uh, for reference, the benchmark lap time is using hot lap only throughout the whole lap and uh, same warm up techniques on the tires. So things to note on your out lap, the left tires, you want them to be heated up near to 80 degrees Celsius. 85 is the optimal temperature. 85 to 95 is the optimal temperature for C3 soft tires around Qatar. But yeah, they overheat quite easily, especially the left rear. So be careful on that. And now let's get into the hot lap. So heading into the last corner here, you want to look for the 50 meter board. This is going to be your breaking point to start your lap and to end your lap as well. So bring back your brake bias to whichever level you prefer. I'm using 54 around here with 90 diff and a medium ERS to start off the last corner. You can put it up to hot lap as well, but as soon as you're on the back straight, open up your DRS and your battery all the way up to the start finish line and then turn it off before the start finish line. Uh, this is going to give you a big boost of top speed down the main straight without using up uh, any more of your ERS allocation for the whole lap. Now heading into turn one, spot that 50 meter board or that white line on the pit exit. And uh, as soon as you cross that, that's going to be your turning in point. You can stay tight on the entry and take the curb or you can just avoid it but staying very close to the white line. I prefer to avoid touching the curb because sometimes it's unstable but destabilizes the car. That's what I'm looking for. And now into the next turn here, there's a short curb uh, between the start and the end of this short curb. That's going to be your turning in point. Take as much curb as possible towards the right hand side. And now this left hander here, avoid that orange part. I prefer to avoid it. You can sometimes take it, uh, try it out as long as you keep the car going straight on the exit, right? And turn on ERS up to overtake for about one to two seconds before the right hander comes. And this is gonna give you another boost of momentum down this short straight here. And now heading into the double right hander, put your ERS down to medium because you will not be needing that much ERS around this corner. Uh, otherwise it's gonna cause understeer in hot lap sometimes. So 50 meter line once again, that's your reference. And then you can take the right hander in fifth gear or sixth gear, whichever you prefer. I prefer fifths. Uh, six gives me a little bit of understeer because this setup is not super pointy. But yeah, uh, take a lot of the curb here and maintain one smooth steering uh, throughout this double right hander. It's the most important thing. If you take multiple steps at the steering, you're probably gonna lose the car or be unconfident and there you go just use as much curb as possible and finally we arrive at the end of sector one look for the 50 meter line once again that's going to be your breaking point take as much curb to start off and break down to third gear here and uh, on the inside line here i prefer once again to avoid the blue part and the curb and uh, but staying tight because there's a little bit of a camber which helps the car to rotate so stay tight but avoid the curb. On the exit, use all the exit curb and turn on your ERS up to overtake again, just for about two seconds until you reach that 150 mark or that 100 meter mark. And bring your car quickly to the left hand side. And another time in this track, look for that 50 meter line. That's gonna be your reference for the next turn in to the right hand side. And yeah, you can Take it in fourth gear or fifth gear, whichever you prefer. And I prefer in fourth gear just to give me that a little bit of engine braking. Take a bit of the inside curb, helps the car to rotate and on the exit, use all the exit curb once again. And uh, turn on ERS to overtake for about half a second or so. And then put it down back to hot lap. And now to prepare for this right hander, you can see there's a little dip 
in the turning point here right before we turn in and you will feel it while turning as well uh, there's no other real reference around here maybe the end of the gravel trap on the left that's the best reference i could see and stay tight bring the car over to the right hand side as much as possible and uh, you see this uh, exit road between these two painted blue parts of the curb and uh, this is going to be your turning in point and again I prefer to avoid the blue part and the curb. It sometimes destabilizes the car, but apparently it can make the car go flatter, right? It's quite bumpy on the exit here, so you may try different lines. Once again, on the exit, turn on ERS to overtake all the way before the 100 meter mark, and then stay flat to the right. Second right also flat. Third right, it's again super flat. And now for the final left, Sometimes there's a downshift and a little bit lift, but there you go. More ERS and now 50 meter mark. Turn in, take the entry curb if you need to, take all the exit curb and open up ERS all the way down to the finish line. And that's going to be about 5 tenths improvement just by using the ERS more efficiently throughout the lap. So there you go. That is a track guide, very quick one around Qatar. It's going to be a very high speed lap. It's going to take quite a bit of time to get used to the sweeping corners, the momentum. So take your time to get used to it. Uh, practice really helps around here. Now let's look into the setup that we are using and also the race strategy, which I <laughs> conveniently missed out in Vegas. So first off, the car setup here, already in park for me, 50, 42 wings. You can use lower downforce like 48, 40, if you need to but you have to adjust it before park firm is enforced uh, do, during the pit stop you can drop the wing if you need 90 10 100 on the transmission which is my standard starting point 20 or 25 off throttle works really nice around here for the race condition uh, keeps the race stable minimum geometry as usual uh, that's the fastest way and easiest way to set the car up suspension we have because well uh, let's just uh, talk very quickly about the track layout, right? It's mostly high speed corners, so you need maximum stability on the front and rear axle. That's why I have 41 on the front suspension, one on the rear suspension to keep the car as stable as possible. Ride height on 20 for the front uh, to keep the car low, but not too low uh, to bottom out. And a 75 on the rear prevents the rear from bottoming out as well when you're using a very soft suspension. And anti-roll bars, usually it's 21, 21. I softened the front to 18 to give me a little bit more turn in on the long corners around here. It really helps. Uh, it's a trend that you'll notice in longer tracks as well. And uh, that's about it. I think this is pretty decent starting point. You can experiment with it and see if you find any more lap time or adds confidence to your driving in, in this high speed track. Now we move on to the brakes, pretty standard, 100% brake pressure and then uh, 53, 54 or 55 brake bias, whichever you prefer. And maximum tire pressures to prevent overheating, especially on the left side of the tires and the left rear. That's the one that overheats the most around here. So be careful on the first few laps in your race. Don't over push the car, maintain the temperatures and you'll be fine. As for the fuel strategy, if you're running in clean air only, you definitely need at least two laps of fuel to be safe till the end in a 50% race. Uh, otherwise, you can use a little bit less if you're always running in DRS trains, right? Uh, for tire strategy, as you can see, the default strategy selected at the top is the mediums to hearts, which is the best strategy to cover off all kinds of scenarios. If there's a safety car, no safety car, and that's pretty much the best way to go. You can pit a little bit earlier on lap 10, lap 11, lap 12, whichever you prefer to get an undercut. Alternate strategies, if you're thinking about it, definitely avoid the soft, as you can see, super bad tire wear and uh, the tire degradation is so bad, the lap times go up so quickly. And you can adjust it to a hard to medium strategy, which is going to be the fastest on paper if there is no safety cars in your league race or something uh, or if you're not expecting any safety cars in your career mode as well so you can pit around 13 or 14 laps to go or 12 laps to go towards the end to get a, a quicker uh, stint at the end and that's about it 
Thank you for watching. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll leave you with a full speed hot lap to enjoy. Leave your questions in the comment section. I'll see you next week for Abu Dhabi. Bye bye.